If you have ever reached a point in your homeschool year where you were on lesson 25 in science and only on lesson eight in history and this frustrated you, you are really going to enjoy today's video. I'm here today to talk about loop scheduling, what it is and how you can use it to bring more peace to your homeschool. Hi everyone, I'm Pam Barnhill and I help homeschool moms find freedom and flexibility in homeschool planning. Now, if you don't think those two words go together, I'm here to show you how they do. So hit subscribe or the little bell down below to be notified every time we have a new video go live. Okay, so what is this loop scheduling thing and how can you use it to bring a little bit of peace to your homeschool? Well, think about what traditional scheduling is. In a traditional school schedule, you may do every subject every day, or you may have certain subjects that you do on specific days of the week. So let's go back to our science and history example. In a traditional schedule, you might do science every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and history every Tuesday and Thursday. But a lot of times what happens is our life doesn't get interrupted evenly. And so often we'll find ourselves missing certain days of certain subjects. And it feels a little frustrating because we feel like we're getting behind in those subjects. So what a loop schedule does is help eliminate some of that. So the way it works is you make a list of subjects that you want to do. So let's say you have a list that includes science, history, Shakespeare, music appreciation, and math games. That's, that's a good list of uh, different things we could be doing in our homeschool. So we have this list and every day we're going to have a designated time in our schedule called loop time. And during this loop time, you're going to start at the top of the list and you're going to start by doing a lesson in your first subject. And then you're going to move to your next subject. And at the end of loop time, you're going to close the books and you're going to stop. The next day, when you get to loop time again in your homeschool day, you're gonna pick up right where you left off with the third thing on the list. Now, if you have a day where an emergency doctor's appointment comes up or you have to chase the dog around the neighborhood because he got out of the fence again and you don't get to loop time that day, it's completely okay. You skip a day and when you come back to it again, you pick up right where you left off. And so some subjects aren't getting done more than others because you're always following the loop. Now, it's called a loop because when you get to the bottom of that list of subjects, you're gonna loop back around to the top and start back at the top again. This is a really, really fun and wonderful way to schedule and feel a little less stress in your homeschool. So that is how you do a loop with what we call content area subjects, things like science and history. But what about those skill area subjects? Well, I don't recommend looping things like math or foreign language because you really do need to practice those on a daily basis, those skill subjects. You need to build up those skills. But let's take a look at language arts. So if you have a sixth grader or a fourth grader who's doing language arts, they may have a number of different things they have to do during language arts time. They might be doing a little spelling, a little grammar, some literature, some writing and composition, maybe some handwriting practice still, and even some vocabulary practice. Well, you can put all of those things on a loop and have that sixth grader work on language arts for about 45 minutes every day. And they can work their way down that loop doing those language arts subjects during that language arts time. And when they get to the bottom of the list, they can move back up to the top again. But let's say you need a, that sixth grader to practice quite a bit of spelling and you don't wanna do vocabulary as much as you're working on the spelling. So what you do then is you increase the frequency are the amount of times that spelling appears in that loop list. So your list might be something like spelling, grammar, literature, spelling, grammar, literature, spelling, composition, handwriting, vocabulary. So you're doing spelling and grammar way more 
than you're doing vocabulary. So by playing with the frequency of how often things appear on the list, you can do them more often in your schedule and give them a greater priority. The possibilities for using loop schedules are endless. Members of our community loop entire days, they loop time with their kids, they even loop their housework and their meal plans as well. So down in the comments, tell me what would you loop and be sure to subscribe for more loop scheduling videos. I'll see you next time.